Okay. Um, hi, I'm Amy Burke. I'm Corporate Communications Manager for Powergrave Macmillan. And first off, I have a declaration to make. I actually work with Grace. So if you feel like she's not asking me hard enough questions, I'm relying on you guys <laughs> to like up the ante a bit, okay? Um, Palgrave is a publisher in the humanities, social sciences, and business. Last year, we published 60 journals, 1,800 monographs, and over 100 Palgrave pivots, which is our mid-length research format. Um, so we're a medium-sized publisher, um, but we're lucky in that we can rely, in some cases, on the um, resources of Macmillan Science and Education, our parent company. Before I joined, there was no corporate communications function at Palgrave Macmillan. Um, we had a fantastic publicity team who sourced book reviews and arranged author tours and all that kind of slightly more glamorous stuff. Um, but the business had recognised that there was a need for someone to really engage with our community on the bigger issues that we face as a publisher. There was some great work already being done across the company in terms of listening. And I think, without blowing our trumpet too much, listening is what we're really good at as a publisher. We undertake both qualitative and quantitative research on the issues that really matter to our community. And by that, I mean academics, um, our authors, um, universities as a whole, librarians, um, and also other groups, which I'll talk about a little bit later. We regularly do surveys from small survey monkeys on one or two different issues which we want to learn more about to um, getting involved with the Nature Publishing Group author tracker survey. Um, that allows us to reach thousands of academics and we've done that the past two years, which is fantastic. It gives us a real insight into why academics choose to publish where they do and open access. Um, we do see some real results from carrying out the, these regular surveys. In July 2012, we asked our HSS academics what their thoughts were on the length of traditional publications. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have heard us talk about this before. We'd had a hunch, and that was from just general doing the conference circuits, um, talking to people at universities on campus trips, the people were generally dissatisfied with the traditional print boundaries of having to publish either in a journal or a huge monograph, and that there was no in-between. Um, as a result of the survey, 84% said that they wanted something in between those lengths, which led to Palgrave Pivot. We also do the qualitative um, research. We have focus groups of librarians in the UK and the US um, once every six months. And then we take issues-based qualitative um, research. Depending on the business objectives we're trying to reach and um, what we think the issues are. So, for example, in the past year, we've conducted surveys and focus groups on what the future of the humanities disciplines could be in the next five years or so, um, tenure track and how publishing influences the tenure track, um, and peer review and the future of peer review. The research on the future of peer review led to us doing an open peer review experiment. Um, it didn't require very much resource. We did the entire thing over a month on a WordPress blog, so it was incredibly cheap, apart from the manpower. Um, it did take quite a lot of internal resource. But often academics tell us that they just appreciate us asking the questions. It's really nice to get an email from somebody saying, oh, actually, you know, it's wonderful that you actually care about these issues. It's, that, it's wonderful that you're asking the question. Um, and that kind of makes it worthwhile, even if we don't get something tangible as an output at the end of it. We've also, over the past year, engaged more in industry groups, um, building relationships with other partners to, to try and reach the groups that we want to reach. Um, a group of our editors really wanted to build a community of um, early career researchers. We partnered with an organisation called the Culture Capital Exchange in London, who have an early career researcher network. Um, we invited them all to our offices, and we had a couple of presentations talking about how they can turn their PhD into a book, um, and the best way to go about that. And then we offered a publishing surgery where each of those early career researchers could go and talk to the editor of their choice and get a five-minute conversation about how best to work up their proposal for the book. 
Um, open access has also been, as you can imagine, a big area of, not concern, but of activity for us over the past year. Um, we published our first open access monograph with the Wellcome Trust, so there's been a lot of dialogue with the Wellcome Trust. And we also joined OASPA, um, which has allowed us to engage more in the conversations about the quality of open access. I think going forward, um, and this was touched on briefly yesterday, we'll be asking more questions about if we're engaging st stakeholders, who are the stakeholders of the future? Who are the people that we're not yet talking to? I think that's the really interesting thing. Um, one presentation yesterday talked about funders as the dark strangers in open access. So do we know enough about funders? Do we talk regularly enough to funders as publishers? That's maybe not the stakeholders of the future, but the stakeholders of today. And as well, I think, as um, publishers, we should be doing more to reach out to um, the young tech graduates who are coming up through the ranks, um, reaching out to people who have the skills to actually drive our businesses forward in really interesting ways that maybe we've not thought about. Thanks very much.